to focus a little bit on the freshman quarterbacks in the SEC. I mentioned uh, I've been very impressed with the play of Michael Van Buren from Mississippi State. Uh, the kid has started two games, and his two starts have been Texas and Georgia. How's that for welcome to Division One SEC college football? Jeff Levy is in his first year. He's trying to build the program to fit what he wants it to be. I think he's got his quarterback. Mississippi State fans, it's I know it's no constellation. We've talked about this before, but Van Buren is legit. This this kid, I think, is going to be a star in the SEC. He didn't show a lot against Texas, 12 of 23 for 144 yards. But against Georgia, your Mississippi State Bulldogs put up 31 points. I, I don't care when it happened, how it happened, who was on the field. You put up 31 points against a Georgia defense. Van Buren was 20 of 37, 306 yards, three touchdowns, and only one interception. Now, is part of that the Jeff Levy effect? When you look at what he did with OU in 2023, now granted, he had Dylan Gabriel, who is pretty good quarterback. We saw that when Oregon knocked off Ohio State Saturday night. Oklahoma, under Levy's last year in 2023, averaged 507 yards total offense a game, 41 points a game. This year, OU is averaging, averaging 287 yards a game, 24 points a game. They, they have a freshman quarterback in there. So does Mississippi State. And while Van Buren and Hawkins Jr. statistics are somewhat similar, Mississippi State's putting up more points than Oklahoma is. So mm -hmm. that, that raises some questions. But when you look at what's happened in the SEC this year, here are freshman quarterbacks that have, that have played, that have started games. Of course, Michael Hawkins Jr. from Oklahoma. Lenora Sellers from South Carolina. Some of these are redshirt freshmen that we'll mention. Nico uh, from Tennessee. We've, we've talked about him. Uh, Van Buren, of course, from Mississippi State. Marcel Reed, remember him from A&M when Wegman was out with the injury. DJ Lagway from Florida, who now is the starter with Graham Mertz's season-ending injury. We hated to see that. It's Lagway's team now. Hank Brown from Auburn started one game. Started another one, actually, I think, and it didn't really yeah. go too well for didn't him. Didn't go so well, yeah. <laughs> reinserted as the incumbent. So you look at those freshmen or those redshirt freshman quarterback on the, uh, quarterbacks on that list. Now look at the passing leaders in the SEC. And here's the point I'm trying to make. It is almost impossible for a freshman quarterback to have a lot of success in the SEC. Here are the passing leaders. Jackson Dart. He's a senior. Garrett Nussmeyer, junior. Carson Beck, senior. Taylon Green, junior. Jalen Milrow, junior. Brady Cook, senior. Peyton Thorne, senior. Nico Imalieva, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm freshman. Diego Pavia, there's your guy, senior. Blake Shapin, who is injured for the season, yeah. senior. Out of the top 10 passing leaders in the SEC, they're all upperclassmen, juniors and seniors, except for Nico at Tennessee. He is the only freshman. He's a redshirt freshman to break that list. So the notion that we're going to bring in 18-year-old kids and we're going to put them out against SEC defenses and we expect them to have a lot of success, it's just not panning out. The numbers aren't adding up there. It's it's tremendously hard to play quarterback in the SEC, let alone for a freshman to go out and try to do it. 